Oh, hi. You didn't see me there. My name is Alan. I grew up playing a game called Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 Edition, a game with an incredible amount of content and potential for character customization, and also a lot of rules. These rules try to encompass an entire universe that with the help of a dungeon master to arbitrate anything a player comes up with that they want to do, it really felt like the limits of the game were just your own imagination. Nowadays, Dungeons & Dragons doesn't support 3.5 edition anymore, they don't make new content for it, but a company called Paizo Publishing makes a game called Pathfinder. Pathfinder is basically Dungeons & Dragons 3.5, but they streamline the rules a little bit, and they keep coming out with new content every year. Something else Paizo does is they publish Adventure Paths. Each Adventure Path is a series of six books, a pre-written campaign that takes adventurers from level 1 to level 17 or 20 or beyond. For someone like me who doesn't always have the time to write my own home games, it can be nice sometimes to take someone else's imagination they put down on the page for me and run it for my players. We've run a lot of adventure paths over the years and we've had a lot of fun at our table. We were hoping we could give you a chance to sit at our table with us and maybe you'd have fun too. So please kick back, relax, and join us as we play the adventure path Reign of Winter. The world on which our game begins is called Galarian. On that world is a continent, Abistan, which stretches from the crown of the world down almost to the equator. In the year 4713, it is split into a collection of many nations. Among these is the country of Teldor, on the eastern shore of the Inner Sea. Once a sprawling empire, its leadership has degenerated into a toadying court obsessed with its own intrigues. To the north, the neighboring nation of Galt is collapsing under the bloody revolution that has directed its politics for over 50 years. On their southern border, an uneasy peace exists with the satrapy of Kadira, with whom Taldor shares a history of conflict going back for centuries. For the ordinary people in those fringe territories, the threat of war is a distant thing. People are more interested in the facts and responsibilities of everyday life. That's how things are in Heldrin, a village to the northeast of the Borderwood, west of the city of Zimar. There, the sun is just beginning to rise on Midsummer's Day. An old man climbs the creaking wooden steps up the clock tower on the top of Town Hall. He's come here every morning for the last 30 years. He checks on the alignment of the mechanisms. He polishes the metal to an immaculate sheen. Gently, he slides a pin into place, reconnecting the clockwork with the great brass bells that hang in the tower. The townspeople don't appreciate them tolling the hours through the night. Now, however, it's about to be six o'clock in the morning. The old man lowers himself into a chair he keeps behind the glass face of the clock. There was something special about this part. Hearing the bells chime, cracking through that sacred morning silence, watching the village stir to life, and all the souls within, and all the possibilities they carry for the new day. Uh... <laughs> all right, clean up aisle, Jack. Uh... <laughs> That's gorgeous. Wow. That's all from art taken from the, from the books. Andrew, first peel of the bell. Your character here is laying on the bench in the booth under a blanket. And you kind of become aware, blinking half to consciousness, that a woman is mopping near you. And as you stir a little bit, she says, There's no point waking up right now, dearie. Coffee and breakfast won't be ready another 20 minutes. Might as well catch a little more shut-eye before the day really begins. Whoa. What did we know when that the coffee is ready? Oh, I certainly will. And then snuggle up. Coffee. <laughs> 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 Sparky, your character wakes up. Mm -hmm. With the peeling of the bells as well. And you feel that familiar weight on your chest and kind of Blinking and raising your head, Thule stretches a little bit and yawns, shows the sharp teeth, and looks at you 
filtering out the edges of your mind are the traces of the dreams that you have every morning before you wake up of you out in the forest with Thule following him, him chasing you sometimes, and this kind of conversation that takes place just in body language and in thought between the two of you. And that moment is interrupted. Uh, you hear a voice from downstairs call, Lumi! Lumi, come downstairs! I'm coming, Mom! <laughs> Good boy. I'm like, eh. Throw on something to wear. <laughs> what? Come down, I need you to run an errand. Okay. You come downstairs and you can kind of smell from here the fumes your mother is concocting something. She's got something in her cauldron. Throwing little powders into it as you come downstairs, uh, she says, I've got two tonics here that I need you to take, and I need you to take them fresh. One of them is for old mother Theodora. The other one is for Elder Safarin's wife. Uh, you can take them in any order, but don't dawdle in between. They both need to be taken fresh. And she all that fresh. takes a big ladle and scoops into one vial and a big ladle and scoops into the other and carefully corks it and hands them off to you. And she says, I've got other stuff to do, but once you're done, It'll be a while before I'll need you again, so you can take a little time. You stumble out the door of your Put house. My hat. <laughs> Where do you go? Uh, I go uh, down the street to the right, and yes. then south to the temple. <laughs> so coming out the door <laughs> of your house, you trip down the path past your herb garden, and you head out to Town Square. Yeah. Which, if we Coming into here. Coming into the town square, yeah. this yeah. is the town square, and you can already see kids are starting to get up. People are starting to make their way toward their jobs. Uh, and the lady stands, that statue, in the middle of the square, as you see her every morning. Yeah. Boy, it always looks better uh, when we're looking at the city from the side <laughs> and above. <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> then I go, uh, I go south. And uh, pretty much, yeah, right there should be the temple. You knock on the door? Yeah. Coming! A moment later, it opens, and it is a reader there. And she says, oh, hello. Hi. I have a thing for you. Oh, thank you. And many thanks to Tessarea. Anytime <laughs> you want to bring us our business, we're always, you know, you got, you got any more, like, scrolls? Well. I know that you're interested in these things. I think we do actually have something tucked away. Yeah. Uh, and she says, now if you ever came and wanted to study here full time, maybe we could give you more of a discount. If you wish to become an apprentice. Ah, uh, the gods don't give me any magic. I keep asking, but they won't do it. Maybe if you worked a little harder instead of just asking, you get more out of it, hmm? Uh, it's so vague. We do have one scroll, and we have a wand. <gasps> now these are expensive uh, things. Yeah, I, I didn't prepare you. my money. Yeah, you, know, you might have to I look at do some job. <laughs> this scroll is a spell that the magic you can weave around yourself, a protective barrier that if you are harmed, it will give you a little extra vitality. And also, a little, make you just a little bit better at things. Your eye a little keener, your wits a little sharper. Hey, I wanna. Hang on, hold, hold, hold it up for me. I wanna look at it. Just for a second. And I, I whisper. How do I look here? And I read it. Okay. This is a scroll of aid. She knows a second level spell. Ooh. It gives you a couple. Temporary hit points and gives you a plus one morale bonus on a couple of different things. And she says, now this wand, you can use it, you can trace it along the edge of a weapon to imbue that weapon with a magical keenness for a short amount of time. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, I'm just gonna, just gonna. I, I say, Tunista Taikuta. And then I do a spellcraft check. Okay. And I and I only get 
a 16. <laughs> With a 16, you identify this is a wand of magic weapon. And that it has 24 charges. I don't know what I would do with that, but it's so cool. Thank you, Zariva. Sure thing. Save up one day and maybe you can have one of these. And she watches you go and closes the door. As you head back up the cobblestones, back at the town square, bank a right, head yeah. east, mm -hmm. and head for the last house on the right. That house is a squat little cottage with smoke already coming up the chimney. Kind of buckled, kind of, kind of dumpy. You come up and knock on the door. Mm -hmm. Coming! Here, shuffling feet, kind of a stomp of a cane. Got a little delivery, Theodora. You wait like a minute <laughs> as these sounds eventually come scraping their way over to the door and it pushes open. And there's old Mother Theodora, this old woman wrinkled, skinny, uh, kind of bowed a little bit, but unbroken. Even though it's a pretty hot day, she's got kind of these knitted blankets thrown over her shoulders. And she's, oh, is that for me? Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lumi. You come in. Come in, I'll make you sure. something. Oh, what you, what you cooking? Oh, well, I had breakfast an hour ago, but I could make you, you want some pancakes? <gasps> you want some yeah. porridge, something like that? Yeah, the, the pancakes. <laughs> pancakes, all right. I'll start working. Oh, I don't have any butter. I could go, eh, it's not worth going and grabbing jam, but. Oh, you could, you know what? You could go down to the stables and maybe get some butter from from the stable there, I can't remember her name. Ah, uh, you mean from Sophia? Yes. Go ahead and see, can you get some, I'll, I have uh, some silver pieces here, I'll give them to you. Can you get some butter for us? Uh, okay, sure. Cakes. There you go. I guess I'll just go all over town today. Yeah, no problem, okay. You're just not even that far. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, Lumi, you have to run all over for people. You can't let it tire you out. You've got to look at it as an adventure. Yeah, I guess the sun's not out quite yet, so it's okay. Oh, it's just peeking up to say hello. Hello, sun! <laughs> all, right, all right, I'll go get that butter. All right. You... Go off your sandals, flapping on stones, two of these still patiently trotting at your side. Sun is starting to come up and you're kind of waiting, you're kind of dreading for that point where it gets a little higher in the sky. It has been hot recently and you've just been really aware of your skin and mm -hmm. the cloth sticking to it. And so you're kind of distracted as you turn the corner and start heading south down the road. I would like you to make a perception check. <laughs> That's a 10. Okay. You make your way almost all the way down to the stable, and you're kind of counting out the silver that you've been given, and it's too much. It's like four or four times more than what you would need to buy some butter. Um, and you become aware of this clattering sound. It's like wood on stone, clack, 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 clack rhythmically coming up the road from the south. You look up, and Coming your way, kind of at a brisk pace, up the road in the early morning light, um, are a couple of figures. Jack, do you think that you could describe yeah. what she sees? Yeah. So, come, which way am I coming from? You're coming from the south. Okay. Down so here. coming from the south, you see, um, probably the first thing you see is uh, like a medium creature, it's a quadruped. It's got these big old ears and this long nose and these big old these little little tusks coming out and it's and it's it's it's, it's, it's kind of roly poly, uh, <laughs> big but it's like it's hairy and it's like <laughs> and it does and, and trumpets and you're like I don't know maybe maybe maybe, what maybe, is that? maybe you know what it is I don't know it's do a knowledge nature check I got a I got a 24. <laughs> <laughs> then you know that. So um, for a moment, you're like, that's an elephant. And you've <laughs> heard of elephants from the north of the continent of Garand. 
it's got all this hair, all this shaggy hair coming down off of it. And you have heard of these woolly mammoths from farther up north. Um, they, there are some in zoos in places. And um, what's the fancy word for zoo? A menagerie. Mm. There's menageries around Talbot <clears throat> that have woolly mammoths. You expect them to be, normally you would know they're huge animals. And this one is merely medium, <laughs> perhaps in juvenile. Mm. Uh, it does walk like a juvenile like it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> seem like it's fully it, yeah the, the, you, you know the big one's kind of like plod and this one's kind of like <laughs> and it's, it's also it's pulling a, a sledge like a, a big big sled this just is the, the rattling sound you've been hearing ah, is this it's, the, just, the runners <laughs> of this sled are falling apart on the cobblestones you can see one is bowed completely out to the side and the bottom of this thing is kind of running yeah. against the rock now as it comes up. And it's uh, and it's covered with like equipment and like camping gear and food stuffs. And riding on the sledge, you see um, a dwarf, a dwarf man. Um, and he's he's a little a little tall for a dwarf. He's like four foot eight, um, uh, and he uh, he has like scale mail armor on and um like cold weather clothes with like a hood you know the hood isn't up so you can see his bald head and this this big uh, black like jet black beard that it's not 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 super long you're just down to here um yeah and, and, he, and he looks like that uh and he but, but the hood's down um and he's, he has the biggest eyes you've ever seen <laughs> 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 And, um, and the biggest nose. <laughs> yes, also, also the biggest nose. And he's just kind of riding, he's holding the reins, and he's looking around with these huge eyes unblinking, and just kind of like... <laughs> just looking, and he's like, like taken aback by these buildings. He's like... And uh, he, some, some other things you might notice on his back, he has um, this enormous spear. Like this is just this big ass spear that's like like it doesn't come come to a little point. Like it has like just it's like the, a sword <laughs> on the end of a stick essentially. Uh, and he's got that on his back. And and uh, additionally, there's there's a, there's another creature. He's kind of awkwardly straddling this. Yeah. Sledge. Like he's trying to ride it just because this mammoth yeah. is going at a faster pace than you think probably he could keep up with. <laughs> but it's awkward because there's this um, like kind of swaddled form of something um, in the sledge that is lying there and he's kind of trying to keep hold above it. Like a bunch of blankets. Yeah. With a 10 you're kind of taking all this in, you're, you're kind of prioritizing information as it's coming at mm -hmm. you and so the two main things you're seeing are this dwarf looking wide-eyed around everywhere and this mammoth that is coming up to the road of her. All right, I beeline right to them. <laughs> uh -huh. And do you want to describe kind of where your character looks like? This is, this is the first person you've okay. seen yeah. this morning coming up to you. Yeah, I, I immediately approach, um, and you see this very short, um, human-looking girl. What? What? Because you're four foot eight. How tall are you? Five foot one. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm on top of a sled. Yeah, I'm right so then. much higher than me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she runs up to you. Ah! Oh my. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of short and a little bit wild, uh, kind of black, almost blue. Um, it's like a kind of weird color of black uh, hair kind of sticking out under this um, uh, like rimmed black hat with a little point that's kind of crumpled over. Um, this loose sort of chemise kind of thing. Um, and then like a like a light shirt, okay. um, belly button exposed, and oh. like Kadirin style um, like poofy pants, um, well, mostly black with some blue accents. Okay. Uh, at my side is this little white fox, <gasps> um, little collar with a little silver uh, bell. Huh. And do you have an animal too? Kill the black. Ah, oh, yeah, we'll get to it. <laughs> he does go. You guys kind of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is, that, is that a mastodon? Where did where did you what? Are you you're a dwarf? You're where are you coming from? Tell me everything. This is why is it f so furry? But it's so in the south. 
well, how could that be? I mean, that doesn't make sense. You it are keeping be pace with yes, the mammoth like... as it has continued to move <laughs> just up the street. It has started to pass the street. Yeah, immediately down. just like, like, they're like coming out like, yeah. I might, I might <laughs> slow it down like a, just a little bit, but we're still like going. Do an animal check. <laughs> That's really good. Okay, yeah. <laughs> You're older. It's a little, getting a little tired at this yeah. point. So it's, yeah. it's swollen dead. You're just talking at me. Like, what's your name? Where are you from? What's your what's your animal's name? <laughs> I'm sorry, what you mumbled? <laughs> do you do you speak? Is that common? Are you I I I ask uh, in Hallet the same question. I ask in Skald the same question. There's one language you're looking for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I give up at that point. <laughs> he kind of like. Kind of like... <laughs> um. Dwar- dwarf? 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 I do a linguist. No. <laughs> You could do that untrained, probably. I'd do a, a untrained linguistics check to try and remember the word for dwarf in dwarven. Sure. And I got a natural 20 for 25. Yeah. So I, I say the word for dwarf in dwarven. She's saying this weird word that sounds kind of yeah. kind of like your word for dwarven. It's like mostly wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. but, but you instantly understand. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna get you. You come, come. come. And I pull up this bundle, and you can see it's just wrapped in uh, blankets and furs. It, this is actually uh, like a, a person. You see the face of a man. Yeah. What? A large, blonde, bearded man with ha- hastily swathed in bandages around his face, uh, which is ruddy and bloody, and in some part places purple. Uh, and he is shivering. I just run off. Yeah. Run off where? I run off to um, to my next door neighbor, Argus Goldtooth. All right, you... I kind of watch him going like... Yeah, so she, she sets like, off, yeah. and she goes up and starts to turn the corner and run away from you. The uh, fox stays with you. Uh, yeah. Fox is familiar. Oh, yeah. You've seen Fox. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you come over to the, the house next door to your own, this mm-hmm. one right here, and bang on the door, and you would no- not normally expect him to be awake. I'm like, Argus! So, you know, you Argus! <laughs> hey! What is it? Is there some dwarves? You hear from upstairs, and whoop, poof! <laughs> I'm just falling out of bed. And you're bup, 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 and the door opens and he's right there in a in a nightgown, his hairy <laughs> chest exposed, kind of his, yeah. his piercings and his gold teeth, and you can smell his morning breath coming out. He goes, "What is it, Lassie? There's there's dwarves. dwarves. There's dwarves. Dwarves. And, and they're hurt. One of them's hurt, and the other one doesn't speak dwarven or in common. What? Doesn't speak Talden. Where? And he, and he looks the over. It's great. You you can't miss him. Where's it go with him? It's a hurt another, another dwarf. And no, it's the big thing. Oh, it's a it's a mastodon, a baby mastodon. I don't understand. That thing's a baby. <laughs> yeah, it gotta get really big. So I've been told. I've never seen one before. Somebody's hurt. Bring him in here. I'll set up a space on the table. What? What, what do I tell them? They don't speak. Oh, no. oh I'll do it. Hey. Bring you! Uh, he does shout in dwarf. Hey, bring your hard friend over here, yelling imposter! What are you doing, trucker people around? Um, all right, all right. You, you, you get, you get like every other word. Okay. There, somebody yeah. is shouting dwarvish at you in an almost incomprehensible accent. Okay. Well, that's actually that's that's better than anything you, else so far. It takes you a moment to yeah. realize that it is dwarvish okay. that you're hearing. Right. Right. Andrew, get on over. Andrew, somebody is having a very loud conversation. Yeah, right in, outside. In Dwarvish, right outside the tavern. Yeah, so the the like the lady comes up and using my coffee, and I'm like, ah, oh, thank you very much. And I'm like, mm, yes. <laughs> and then as soon as like it reaches my lips, I hear all the shouting outside, and I'm like, and I'm like, mm. get over here! 
Can you knock it off? Shouting at you. Okay. It's you I'm talking to. Go. Go where are we? Do you handle him? Yeah. You? I put my coffee down, but I, I run, run to the door and look. Yeah, what's you, going you on? kind of scamper over and look outside. I got um, You look out the door, and there is a dwarf dressed in furs with armor with some kind of big hairy animal that he is trying to Ooh. coerce with a sled coming up behind it all fucked up and janky and broken like it's been dragged over stone with um, the body of a human male in the back and you can clearly see that from here you can see this injured Ooh. person with the blonde beard laying in the sled and shivering oh my i want to I I run over okay you are trying you're just trying yeah. to maybe physically I get off this and like start pulling on his face. Yeah. <laughs> his, his cheeks are kind of going, <laughs> his trunk's flapping back and yeah. forth. It like tries to twist it around your head a little no. bit. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I give up. Yeah. And I and I just go to get the guy. Yeah. And I turn around and maybe you're the way I see this person. Yeah. You, so this dwarf Whoa. gives up his fight with his animal. He goes and picks this human all the way up into his arms. Almost twice his size. Oh, that was a guy. human. Was a yeah. human yeah. Oh, I missed that. I thought it was a human. Um, and, and turns around, and you're just standing in his way unexpectedly. Oh, my. Like, I jump out of the way. Dodge out from under his feet. Uh, you see this little guy. He's got this this long, like, really curly, like, dirty blonde hair. And these, like, light brown eyes. And he's got this, like, little patchwork, like, cloak on his back. And he's got all this, he's got all these, like, torches. And he's got uh, <laughs> a little, a little person-sized. Uh, is he uh, is he small? Sword. Yeah. 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 Wow. This strikes you as odd because it's like a really short human child, yeah. dressed like an adult. Yeah. Dressed like a grown-up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like he's got like a knife and like a, okay. a sword on his on his hips. And you're like, oh, excuse me. Do, do, do you say that in dwarven? Yeah. Do you do you need some help? Yeah. No. Make a make a linguistics check. Okay. Fourteen. Yeah, he gets the point across. It's again this weird version mm -hmm. of dwarvish where right. some of the pronunciations are just wrong. Yeah. And uh, you can kind of cobble together uh, what he's meaning. Uh, you you want want you? That point to the to the master. Like, you let me or he doesn't like. Oh, yeah. Eat anything. Yeah, sure. I love doing my best. All right, I gotta get this guy right. <laughs> hey there, little guy. You're a big guy. Whoa, you're really big. <laughs> yeah. 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 Kind of... <laughs> Just kind of... Hey! <laughs> so he starts carrying this guy over, and Argus goes, yeah, he's strong. Let me clear a space. I'll go an extra bed ready for him. Come, help me get that linens ready. And he clears off, he kind of throws some of the boxes of food that he was keeping in the bed, throws them off to the side. Um, as you come up and you see this individual, this is a dwarf, um, oh, okay. pretty scraggly black beard. And when he opens his mouth to talk to you, he's got all these gold teeth. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, you were you were picking that up a little bit before you got that yeah, close to him. But true. You, so you're out there, kind of standing in the road, and maybe you've <laughs> wandered over to like. I'm trying to keep this this myth like. At bay. I'm yeah. Sorry. I, I try to do a handle animal to just calm him down. It idly... seems pretty calm. Oh, okay. Honestly. Like, it's, it's, it's like really, of... really calm. <laughs> it's, like, it doesn't really care what's going on. It's kind of breathing a little heavily. It's, its ears are like, I think, fanning back mm -hmm. on itself. It's yeah. so hairy. It's not late into the day. It's not super hot yet, but it seems like it's been, it's been moving for a little while. Uh, and it just kind of looks at you with these bugged out eyes. I, I try to like go up and pet it. Yeah. You've done some good work. You like brought the hurt guy to a place where he can get some help. It starts walking past you, and there's the, oh. the rattling. Hey, wait, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> Don't go wandering off now. Do a handle animal check. Fifteen. They keep going. Oh, <laughs> it's acknowledging you, like it's not just flat out ignoring you. Coming back, <laughs> but it doesn't really seem to like acknowledge or care about what you're saying. Um, uh, you want to try to like physically. No. no? Okay. <laughs> Things up the pace a little bit as it heads for this garden uh, <laughs> outside this house right here. You guys are inside the barber shop. This guy has been hefted up on the bed, and Argus is looking at him. He goes, Arg, this is. Where did you find this guy? 
He got frostbite. He got frostbite. He got frostbite. We need we wet, wet cloth. Heat, hot heat. Mm. Not a fire, no fire, too dry heat, no good. Lassie, where did you find this man? Just outside. He's just wandering. Yeah, he was just coming up the street. He can hardly speak Dwarvish proper. I think he said he found him. I think he said this man's got a frog back. Uh, go get mom, maybe. Maybe she can help. I'm about to start doing the physic. You can go get her. Okay. I'll go. Oh, get your mother! Okay, I, I stumble out the door. <laughs> you and then I see this mastodon eating my garden. Well, yeah, you stumble out the door at the same moment that you hear your mother scream. <laughs> I'm like, wait, did, did he say not to let it eat anything, or did he body it? Who's <laughs> standing a, an arm's reach back from this animal, trying to figure out how he should intervene? Is he's a ten-year-old uh, boy? Who drew that? Did you draw that? That was me. That was you. Are you yeah. drew that? Yeah. Wait, you're damn, gonna, damn, bro. Wait, are, are you gonna draw you? I didn't know that. Because <laughs> I didn't know this until yesterday. But Andrew's super good at drawing. What the <laughs> well, now I'm mad. <laughs> Oof. He's got these blonde curls kind of coming down over his face. He's got this little cloak and these boots, and he's got like kind of knives and sort. He looks kind of like you would expect. Um, like you've seen kind of like city boys before who run around mm -hmm. playing at soldier and they have like wooden swords and things like that. He kind of reminds you of that. Tessarea runs up at this mammoth and is also trying to, shoo, no, get away. Uh, and what you see is this woman comes out is this humanoid, medium height, blue skinned creature with where the ears are. They kind of go back in webs and like spines with webs in between them. And she's got kind of these pinched, Slitted nostrils. Who knows local check? 16? Okay, this is an undine. And you recognize that they are creatures who have somewhere in their ancestry blood from the elemental plane of water. What are the two of you doing about it? Uh, uh, hey, bad! Bad Mastodon! Stop. I'm no. gonna bluff to make it seem like I've been trying to. Get it <laughs> off of these for this whole time, off of the garden. All right, what do you say? Oh, like I said, uh, get off of that garden there. <laughs> Jeez. And I like go and like try to grab the the nasty dog. Yeah, do a bluff check. Okay. okay. Uh, sixteen. Okay. The undine seems to buy it. She's not even nice. re registering. Either. Same. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Nice. And try to do a strength check. Oh. This is going to be opposed by... Ooh. I'm going to run over the and creature. try to assist. Try and assist. In Pathfinder, you can do the aid another action, which we usually call assisting, where if you're trying to help somebody do something and you're, they're doing some kind of check, you can do the same kind of check, uh, trying to hit a DC 10, and if you can hit that, then you're going to add a plus two to whatever they get on their check. So and seeing that you two are brave enough to come up next to it, Tessaray is going to come up and try to assist as well. She does not. Me either. I got a 17. Okay, it's not sufficient. No! <laughs> it's really just, good! It rolled really yeah. good. Too. So <laughs> as the two of them kind of stand next to it and like push, like tension on it, on it just try, trying to push it back the way, you hold onto the tail and you try to <laughs> tug it away and it, it is not interested in moving. <laughs> That's where he's going, no, 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 no! My it's cabbages! <laughs> <laughs> After a time, the three of you manage to pull this mammoth back out to the main road, and you maybe you get to feel to yourselves like you accomplished something. But <laughs> he just ate as much as he wanted. <laughs> he started to eat things that weren't really food, and they had a flavor that yeah. he, you gotta like let him fall back out of his mouth. I'm like, oh, there's there's someone who was really hurt in in in, in Argus's. There's someone. There's a dwarf with that thing came holding a guy who was really hurt. I don't know what the deal is. Get someone to look after this thing and keep it out of my garden, and I'll, I'll... You think maybe Sophia would know? I'll check, I guess. Uh, I'm supposed to buy butter from her. You still got the silver <laughs> in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll go do that. You, you run over off toward the stable where Sophia is. This 
woman comes in the door behind you, this blue skinned mm. woman with uh, with the ears going back in the fins. It's like a big fish person. Who the hell are and you? And she walks towards you and she says something to you that you don't understand <laughs> and registers that there's no real yeah. reaction from that and starts talking to the other dwarf. Fire? Mm -hmm. Hot hot water? You guys start putting it together? Uh, yeah. Go ahead and do a heal check. Yeah. Uh, you are being not assisted okay. by Argus. <laughs> Dang it. I got an 11. Okay. That's enough to kind of do some substance. Now you've got yeah. him back in a more comfortable yeah. place. And all of a sudden you look over to your side and there's this box holding uh, some like pillowcase in no. his mouth. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. You run down to the stables, leaving you again with the mammoth, and it starts oh. to wander toward the grass. Not again! We all come back! And try to make it stop. Handle it. Handle it, sure. Oh, I got a 10. Okay, it's still going. No, come back! Oh, uh, that poor lady. I, I try to do a it is, check. It's, it's leaving the garden alone now. It's oh. going like out of town. Mm. Oh, oh, wait. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I should feel about this. <laughs> hey, come back. I'm going to try to like do a strength check to keep it from like leaving. <gasps> 17? Well, it only got four. <gasps> I succeed. So with that, you do come up next to the man, and you just hug it around one of its legs. Hey, uh, just calm anchor, anchor your entire body around it. So every time it lifts that leg, it has to lift your entire body. <laughs> it successfully does. Yeah. <laughs> it eventually stops and kind of turns back toward you, and its trunk, its big, long nose kind of brushes against your feet and kind of like sniffing at them. Hey, uh, okay. This is, this is good. You're not, you're, yes. Keep sniffing my feet. It makes you not walk away. It shovels up next to you and starts to fall sideways into you. I need you to make a reflex save. <laughs> uh, 16. Yeah, you, you kind of roll back out of the way as it just goes Whoa. straight to the ground. And it kind of, its legs kind of kick a little bit. And it doesn't move again until she comes back with this woman, kind of this squat. A uh, woman, maybe her early 60s, uh, with some little, like, warts and sunspots on her face. What is that? That's a great big beast. He's got trappings on him, so he's domesticated to some extent. It's, it is wearing a, a harness. Yeah. yeah, okay. So yeah. she's able to grab onto the harness. Um, I don't remember if that's a plus two in general or just a plus two for you. <laughs> Mm, that's true. <laughs> um, you can see you can you guys might actually get a chance to look at this. It's got like um, like bed rolls and blankets, and it's got like a, a seri a, like a really serious cooking kit, with, like a really serious iron pot, um, and um, like uh, there's you can see in this stuff there's a uh, there's a short bow with like some a quiver of arrows and a, a war hammer. Also, like they're all just kind of like strapped to the sides, um, and then like there's there's like more furs. And like a pair of snowshoes. I wouldn't put it past those Kadirans to cook up something like this. Anyway, I'll bring it back to the stable for now since it's being a public menace and all, but I don't stable anything for free. And you can tell whoever brought it here that I expect this thing will eat a lot. Come on! And she yeah. starts to guide it down. Oh, maybe not it, anymore. It kind of <laughs> falteringly follows her and deviates a little bit back toward the door of the barbershop as she, she guides it off. And it's the two of you left alone out there in the street. Hey. Hey. <clears throat> Do you know what this thing is? Uh, what I'm, is this? It's a mastodon. Who are you? What is that? I'm a Cloudy Cobaldicio. Hello, Cloudy Cobaldicimo. Baldicio, yeah. Baldicio? Yeah. Is that one? That's the Claudia. Two words. Cla First and last name. Is yes. your name. Okay. Yes. Guys, it's. It's, it's Claudico. 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 Oh my god, yes. Alan. You're a madman. <laughs> why? <laughs> yes, why? It was already there. Yeah. And you're a halfling? What? Is that right? It looks like a human kid. I, he, does it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm just a kid. <laughs> I just like playing with this thing. 
I'm like, I'm like on it as, as, well, it's, as it's, it's like upside down. Being, are, are you following it as it's being taken? Oh, it's being taken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll follow it then. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, I will. Follow it. <laughs> uh, yeah, as you guys are walking, it's just like, burr, 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 like with the with the trunk, and it like turns around behind its head, and you're like, <laughs> Where? it's so funny. What is your name? I'm Lumi. Lumi. Lumi Willabark. Willabark. I'm nice that, to... that blue what? lady's adopted kid. Oh, okay, that makes sense yeah. now. I was like, what? I like her frown. Thank you. I like, <laughs> I like her frown a lot. She does absolutely rock that um that uh RBF. Where where you're not from town, are you? I no, I am from out of town. I came to en- entertain people. I'm a juggler, woo, and I take out some torches and I'm like woof 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 woof. Wow. Yeah. Is, is that just is that magic? Are you doing magic? What? Or is, is are you just really good? I'm just I I don't know any magic. Oh okay. I'm just really good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you kind of cast your eyes around, uh, and things have kind of settled down. But there are a few people kind of gathered in the square. Who this is interrupted the routine and they were watching to see what would happen. Is it having to them, go back through the square? Yeah. 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 One of them you recognize is this tall, very straight, kind of stern looking woman uh, who you recognize is Ionia Tevin. Counselor Ionia Tevin. Um, who's oh my god. Watching this with a kind of sideways, wry expression and kind of looks at you questioningly. And as you stymie mean, there, she walks up, kind of hands uh, through properly in front of him, and says, Lumi, yes. what exactly has happened? Um, so this, uh, this uh, dwarf, um, he, no one can really understand. Uh, he came in and he had... I understood uh, him a little bit. Kind of hard, though. You could talk to him? Yeah. I was like, this Hello? is Cloudico. Hello. He's from out of town. I was thinking that I did not recognize you. Welcome. Nice Cloudico. to meet you. Uh, and he had some kind of really hurt person, like like a human, a hurt human. Someone sustained an injury. Mm-hmm. I guess so. He didn't look good. Where are they now? We took we took him to uh, Argus's. And she begins to briskly walk in that direction. Uh, uh, you know her well enough that when something like this happens in a town, she immediately makes mm-hmm. it her responsibility. A number of other people kind of come into this barbershop and kind of mill around you. You kind of get get pushed off into the corner yeah, of the confusion yeah. at a certain point yeah. as they're all talking to one another and looking at this guy and treating for him. Uh, and I think you're there with Thule kind of watching and helping mm-hmm. out as well. Um, do you stay with the mammoth? What do you end up doing? Because uh, they, they can bring it back to the pen and they kind of get it tied in somewhere where it's on a lead okay. and it can only go so far. I'm going to go talk with this guy. Okay, yeah. I'm curious about that. Yeah. You go and uh, as you pass by in front <clears throat> of the tavern, Kale is outside holding your mug of coffee. And she says, Oh, thought you might want this. Oh, what extraordinary service. Seems like you're into something exciting over there. Yeah, I got a bit distracted. I hope I can hear about it later. Got I'll make back. sure to come back and tell you. Please do. She kind of waves you off. See you later. All right. So you end up, th- maybe the two of you end up standing would, next to each other at some point. Well, would there have been like, so like a bunch of people are coming into this place and we're mm-hmm. in the, okay, at that point, I would like go outside. I'd probably stand outside and then look for the mammoth. And then it's not there. Yeah, you're coming up with a mug of coffee and no mammoth. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to mammoth? Oh, they took it off and took the stable. What yeah. is your take 10 linguistics, Claudica? 12. Well, yeah, 12. Okay. So it does, it takes a little bit of like measured effort for the two of you to understand what each other are saying. You feel like in a chaotic situation, like inside, it would be more difficult. Uh, for now, as long as you can kind of have a moment to converse and talk back and forth, you can understand each other pretty well. Mm. Yeah, they took it to that way. He starts walking now. <laughs> hey, wait! <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll walk with you. Like walking by your side. Like I have these like tiny short strides, so I have to like. <laughs> yeah. I'm not much better. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys are actually going the same. Yeah, yeah same, same speed. speed. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I'm going twenty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is your name? Where are you from? You have a mammoth. Yeah. I'm Gurf. 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 
<laughs> Your name is Grift. <laughs> I'm just sorry. I'm gonna do a bluff check to conceal my laughter. Uh-huh. <laughs> I got a 13. <laughs> Insufficient. No. <laughs> what? I'm a cloudy. I'm cloudy. Cloudy kill. There's no vowel. <laughs> Well, there's two Fs. What do you roll the Fs? Gurft. 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 Uh huh. Where does this, where does someone like you come from? North. Well, where? I have some knowledge local. I might know. Maybe. What is my village's name again? I don't remember. Village. Yeah, yeah, it's just a village. A village? A village called what? What? What are you talking about? What did you say your name was? Cloudy Cobaldi Joe. Cloudy Co. Yeah, that's the one. That's a stupid name. Hey, that's not very nice. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's not your fault you named you a stupid name. <laughs> uh, I like you. Tell it like it, like how, tell it how it is. <clears throat> what? Do a perception check. Why would you tell it a different way? <laughs> uh, perception check. <laughs> Where is that? I got a uh, 17. Okay. Thank you for 17. Thought there was a moment there where Gerft might have noticed something with a successful perception check. You drink? I got some coffee from the inn. What is that? It's over there. No, what? Oh, what, what, what is, is it? What is coffee? What? What it? What is coffee? What is that? It. <laughs> you want some? <laughs> you give it a try. It's really good. Everybody likes coffee. There's no no in, like entry barrier or anything at all. <laughs> Isn't it great? Have the rest. <laughs> oh, you're so kind. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> coffee. <laughs> what are you? What? You like it? Yeah. I go, go to the stable. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. It's gonna, it is gonna be hard on my voice, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stick with it. Mm-hmm. I, or I walk in the front door and there's like a lady. Uh, yeah, and there's these other animals that you've, <gasps> you've maybe heard descriptions of them before. They're quadrupeds, mm-hmm. also very tall, very muscular, with kind of these long necks and these very long faces yeah. and these manes of hair Whoa. going down the side there and you look over and there's another thing that you've really never seen something like that before it's shorter and squatter much more muscular uh, much mm. heavier looking thing with these two horns that kind of come out to the side Ooh. like that i go so over to that thing too yeah i like walk just like right past the lady maybe she says something at me i don't understand yeah, yeah, you <laughs> i go over that thing what are you Holy crap! <laughs> You're a big boy. You were kind of flicks at you. Oh. <laughs> I like this thing. What is it? It's a cow. <laughs> I like this thing. Is it a bull or a cow? It's a cow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cows have horns. It's a bull. I said it had horns. Cows can have horns. Cows can have horns. It depends on the breed. Okay. Yeah. It's a cow. <laughs> okay. Huh. What's it you for? Don't, uh... What's it for? What? What's it for? What is it for? Yeah. Makes milk. You know, okay. Oh, I see. She? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You don't get out much, do you? You don't get out of... I'm only ever out. ...village. Oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't been far this far so. <laughs> anyway, what? I'm going to show them a mammoth. Oh, okay. <laughs> Find the mammoth out back? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey! 
<laughs> what, are, what are you still finding to crack the up? The eyes. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, I love. Just um, it, honestly, it's just a soul expression. It's just. <laughs> Alan did a really good job of capturing the, yeah, what I was absolutely. Describing. Fantastic expression. He, um, he also, he is, he, uh, he is, has like mittens dangling mm-hmm. from the side. Yeah, he's not sure. wearing them, mm-hmm. but it looks like he could have them. What, uh, what, <laughs> the, uh hey, what, what, what happened to your friend? The cold, the cold man. Mm, not my friend. Oh, you just found him? Yeah. What, what happened to him? Right before me. Right man. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. No, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. sense. <laughs> it's like really, really, really around here because it's really, hot. really hot here. Oh yeah, it is currently Midsummer's Day. <laughs> he is, he's just wearing like these heavy clothes and this armor over. He, he's just sweating. He's like, I'm all like, you're really hot. How did he uh, get to frostbite it's so hot? This dwarf smells like. <laughs> I mean, make like a fortitude save. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you think he's been traveling for a while? How how long did did you? Uh, Maybe his whole life. <laughs> how long have you how have you had him? How long has it been? Like a couple of weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. The the human. I I realized I pointed thinking. Yeah, oh. you you point at the <laughs> yeah oh, at the barber shop. Oh, okay. Which you can see the back of from here. It's been like what? Like this morning? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were. Found him every morning. Where? Where did you find him? You know how there's all these like rocks on the ground? Oh, like someone put them there. You know? What? Do I know about this? In like a line. <laughs> what? I don't. Right outside! Right outside! And he, points to the, he just points to the street. Oh, the, the cobblestones? <laughs> sure, if you ever call it. <laughs> you just laying on the side. Yeah. You're just laying on the side of that. They go for a real long time. It's a that's a road. What? It's yep. That's the point. See that word again? Road. Road. You're right. Side of the road. Okay. Mm. North or here? That would make sense. You've yeah. been traveling south this whole time. Okay. Right? Yeah. Over here. Huh. Oh. <laughs> Do a survival or knowledge nature or knowledge geography check. Uh, 17 survival. Okay. You look around. No. Not north. South. Because the sun's over there. And you came from that way. So I... So you got turned, I get turned, you got around, turned around, around at some point. <laughs> he doesn't say anything. He just like... You haven't really had a good enough view of the sky since you went into the forest to okay. determine direction like that. Oh, so I'm not, okay. I'm not sure when that might have happened. Oh, what a turn me. As you ponder that, yeah. in the barbershop, Lumi, um, they're looking at this guy, and you've brought in um, Councilwoman Tappan, and they're kind of having this hushed conversation over him, trying to figure out what's going on. And Argus says, well, he's got all these runes from these blades on him. It's like he's taking some kind of combat injuries. And Tessarea says, but he's also suffering from frostbite and hypothermia. That shouldn't be possible. You would need below freezing temperatures for that. And Ionia Teppan is standing back. And goes, frostbite, no temperatures. I think that we're going to have to have a town meeting today. Those of you here now are welcome, and I'll put out a word for anyone else who cares. Over the course of the next couple of hours, they are going to try to get him in more stable shape. Would you, is there any way you think you could assist in that process? Making this guy comfortable, getting him tended to? Is there ever a moment where people aren't paying attention to him? Mm-hmm. Then in that moment, um, with a uh, toolie near me, me looking at him and just sort of put my hand on him and this like little subtle blue glow comes down my fingers and into him and he heals eight hit points. Okay. And with that, his breathing becomes 
a lot easier. And you can see kind of these wounds on his face that they kind of cleaned, but haven't gone around to putting a big bandage on yet, kind of sew up until they're almost entirely gone. Um, and with that, he kind of opens his eyes and blinks at you. Hello. Oh, so bad. <laughs> yeah, he kind of does look at you kind of sideways like that. Um, you can tell that he is Ulfin. Where am I? You're in Heldron. Taldor. Where? I know Heldron. You know Heldron? Yeah. Who are you? My name is Yul Norstag. I am a bodyguard to the Malison family. Oh, uh, who is that? Do you know his nobility check? You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he is speaking in common. Is there anyone else alive? Uh, everyone in this room is alive. You mean like... Did they find anyone else? As far as I know, they only just found you. It didn't, they didn't say anything about any dead bodies, so. They what? didn't find the place then. If they found the spot, they would have seen the dead. What, what happened? We were, <laughs> uh, and at that point, Tessaria comes back into the room and sees that he's awake and cautious and says, oh, Lumi, give him some space. Don't try to talk yet, sir. We're gonna make you comfortable, get some rest. He said there's bodies. Gonna try to get the whole story from you as soon as we can. 